So we have identified papacy, United States of America, and American Protestantism as the first beast, the second beast, and the image of the beast of Revelation chapter 13. But there's one more thing I want you to see. How will these entities force or wage their war against liberty of conscience? And we find our answer in verse 11 of this book, Revelation 13. It says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Speaking as a dragon is the act through which the war of the end time on the liberty of conscience in our time is going to be waged. I repeat, speaking as the dragon is the how of the enforcement. Great Controversy, page 442, paragraph 1, says the speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. The prediction that it will speak as a dragon and exercise all the power of the first beast plainly foretells a development of the spirit of intolerance and persecution that was manifested by the nations represented by the dragon and the leopard-like beast. And the statement that the beast which with two horns causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast indicates that the authority of this nation is to be exercised in enforcing some observance which shall be an act of homage to the papacy. And so you ask, how shall America speak like a dragon? We have our answer in the final sentence of this statement. It says the nation will exercise its authority in on enforcing some observance which shall be an act of homage to the papacy. And that this may make sense, let us read verse 15 to 17. So verse 15 to 17 gives us the how these powers intend to fulfill this purpose. It says he had power to give life to the image of the beast. In other words, America had power to give life, to give strength to Protestantism. And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Everyone will be forced to worship the image of the beast. Otherwise they are killed. Verse 16, it will cause both small and great, rich and poor, free and born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast. The United States of America, working together with Protestantism, will force everyone to have the mark of the beast. That this is the how they intend to enforce their war or enforce laws against God's commandments. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what then is the mark of the beast? We have been taught from the Bible that papacy United States of America and American Protestantism will work together to enforce the mark of the beast. And if you do not take the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy or sell. What is the mark of the beast? Fair question, isn't it? What is the mark of the beast? Now, we have known who the beast is. Papal power of Rome. How about just ask them, what is your mark? And they answer you in these statements. Read with me if you can. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1st, 
1923. In another place they say, Not the creator of the universe in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, but the Catholic Church can claim the honor of having granted man a pause to his work every seven days. S.C. Mosna, Storia della Domenica, 1969. Now these are statements from the heart of the beast. And they're actually saying, we are competing with God. Sunday worship is our mark of authority. You ask what the mark of beast is? Sunday worship, it is. They say it themselves. And then they make a very blended blasphemous statement saying that it was not God in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 through 3. Let's just go to Genesis 2, 1 through 3 and, and find out what do they really mean. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. My version talking about the creation of God says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has made. God rested on the seventh day. Verse 3, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. God rested the seventh day. And you and I know that the seventh day is a Sabbath. Why? In Exodus chapter 20, we find God giving the Ten Commandments. And I want us to read verse 8 of that chapter. Exodus 20 verse 8. Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days, verse 11, the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, whereof the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and allowed it. So God gave a command that human beings shall worship on the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. Catholicism, the beast, claims that it is them who have given humanity a true day of rest. Why? Because everyone worships on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. And they say, the beast or papacy says that Sunday worship is a mark of their authority. And so Revelation chapter 13 verse 17, talking about forcing everyone to have the mark of the beast or perish, actually says that the papacy, America, and Protestantism will work together and legislate Sunday worship. They'll make mandate for Sunday worship. And if you do not want to worship on Sunday, you will be killed. You will not be able to buy or sell. It appears or, or feels far-fetched until you remember that right now we are suffering government mandates and there's nothing you can do about it. The pandemic has shown very clearly that it is possible to pass mandates that take freedom from you. It is possible to take away your freedom by law. The devil is planning and is, has been planning for decades to destroy the principle of liberty of conscience by passing a Sunday law and forcing everyone to follow Sunday worship against God's own commandment. Just as Cain did with Abel, just as Satan did through King Nebuchadnezzar with the whole citizens of his kingdom, the devil is going to use the agency of the papacy, United States of America, and the apostate Protestantism to pass a Sunday law in support of the devil against God's commandment and force via mandates that humanity shall only worship on Sunday. We have answered the first two questions. The first one, who are the entities? Papacy, United States of America, apostate Protestantism. 
The second question, how? By enforcing a Sunday observance law in the American Legislative Assembly, an act that the Bible referred to as speaking as a dragon. The last question we need to ask ourselves is, when is this going to happen?